That's John chapter 20. We're just going to commence reading at verse 13, or 15 rather. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seek you? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say to them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Isn't that beautiful? Just so beautiful. We are not alone. And as I was pondering this morning, it was different. Got up, and I wanted to get, to come to the church early. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And I woke up and just lay there momentarily. Then got up, and uh, it was quite early. And I decided what I would do was to just take some time, just maybe five or ten minutes, and take some time and think upon the Lord. And then when I got to the church, of course, spent the part of the morning reading, praying, and worshiping God. But this morning, I would like to challenge us as Christians. Mary Magdalene, it was wonderful, the love that she had for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I couldn't help but think, is my love a strong and as powerful that should be, how it should be. And so <clears throat> I prayed, came in the sanctuary, prayed for a while, went back in my office, prayed. And you know, Christians, what God wants from each and every one of us is a total surrender, total surrender. We may not understand why he is taking us down this road. We may not understand. But one thing that we do know, that God never makes a mistake. He just doesn't. And what he wants from you and I is to be more like him. To be able to worship him. To be able to go on the street and witness as God leads us to different people. One thing that was really in my mind this morning was the fact that God wants all of us. Now, I am not saying, and please understand, I am not saying that you people are not where you ought to be. What I'm saying, there is more, there is more, and there is more to God, more to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And therefore we can say without a shadow of a doubt, God is my lover. He is my depender. Or tender. <laughs> That's a new word, by the way. <laughs> Excuse me, but that is rather hilarious. <laughs> We depend on him. 
And because we depend on him, he is there with open arms. And there are times where the Holy Spirit just wants to talk with us. Why? It's because there is so much to know about God. There is so much to know about heaven. There is so much to know that God is our God. And in doing so, we are able to witness. Now, I'm going to say this. As we become more like Jesus, and we have that wonderful desire to witness, when we go out, whether it's in, in the mall or where it may be, do you know something? God is with us. And there's always someone that God wants us to minister to. Always. And this is why it's so important when we get up in the morning and we have our devotion and we say, God, today, please lead me to someone. And you know what? He'll do it. He will do it. And this is how we become so involved with the Spirit of God. God is our director. Excuse me. Once again, I was able to sit in my office and just to talk with the Lord, just to worship with Him, to hear His voice through the Word. And there are times, Christians, where the Holy Spirit is so desirous to cause you and I to communicate with him, to communicate with him. And as we do this, Christians, we find that God is so desirous to lead us even deeper. That's not him, deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus. Daily, let me grow. And this is what it is all about, Christians, is allowing the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to dwell within us so that when we get up, whether we go to work, or whether we go shopping, or whatever, the Holy Spirit is there, and what He wants you and I to do is to speak on His behalf. Now, I do recall my dad. He would sometimes embarrass, embarrass me. You know what he would do? He was, a, he was a contractor, and um, he would have somebody working for him, and they were not Christians. And my dad would always get on his lunch, and he would pray over his, his food, his meal. And they used to embarrass me because there was a person there that wasn't a Christian. And why is my dad doing that? What is he trying to do? And this went on. You know what happened, Christians? This man that was working for my dad gave his heart to Jesus. Hallelujah. And Christians, Amen. this is what God wants from you and I. He doesn't want us to yap at each other. He wants us to worship Him and to praise Him and to allow the Spirit of God to direct us in the right path where those that are looking for reality, those that are hoping, those that are coming to a decision, should I take my life or shouldn't I? God will lead you in His way. And He will give you the gift of love for the individual. Our oh God is an awesome, awesome God. And therefore, it is imperative that we walk in the Spirit of God. 
and allow the Spirit of God to direct us in all of our ways. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's beautiful, Christians. It's wonderful. Everlasting life. The life that God gives to you and I as we give our hearts to him. He wants you and I to show forth his love within us. Excuse me. This morning as I was thinking of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, it really hit me. And I'm not going to, going to cry too much, but I became emotional. Our God, he went to the cross. And one thing is certain, Christians, he loves each and every one of us that are sitting in this auditorium this morning. He loves every one of us. And all he wants is our right. Give me 